All right, I got a behind the scenes build video for you guys today. This time featuring the Het Wrecker. What we're focusing on now is the Wrecker has two awesome winches here in the back, except there's no system in place to guide the cable onto them. So they're only useful right now for doing like a straight back pull. So Dave wants these like pulley roller fair leads. They like rotate in every direction and keeps the cable nice and under control, except you can't have one of those mounted like right in front of it because the cable won't track on the drum right. You gotta have it like way far in front of it. And when we were excavating the Susan Powell mine, we were using one of these winches and we had a snatch block pulling the cable over so it was in the center of the drum. And that snatch block was like five feet in front of the winch. And at that distance, the cable tracked on beautifully. So the goal is going to be to put one of those fair leads about five feet in front of this winch out in this open area here. So it's gonna be a crazy gantry to support that out in the open here. It's gonna to have to be super strong, strong enough for Dave to not break, which I don't know if it's possible, but we're gonna give it our best shot. Now the truck already had these plates welded on. And so what I did was ran a pipe through those holes and use that to align these new plates that I welded on. And with that, they line up dead center, all eight holes. So these are pretty strong. They should be, those will be my four main mounting points to mount my home gantry system. And to make it clear, these cables coming down, it's gonna jut up at like a 60 degree angle and then hold the eyelid up here and then also frame back to the actual plate that the winch is mounted to. And it's just gonna be angled as much as I can and just get as much strength out of it as I can because it's gonna have to hold up against a ton of leverage and a ton of force that those big winches are gonna be putting on it. Because I'm sure we're gonna hook up to some extremely heavy things. I'm sure Dave will figure out how to bend my, grand, my gantry no matter how strong I make it. But I'll try my best. So I ordered this square tube in for the project. It's three inch by three inch by three eighths wall. So. I'm thinking with enough of that material, the gantry will be strong enough. So how these eyelets work is this pulley attaches to this tube. And then that tube is inside this bigger tube. So this whole thing is able to rotate around like that in there. So if your cable is running that way, this thing just pivots to that way. So since the cable can run any angle out of that pulley, and then the pulley itself can rotate anyway, that allows the cable to travel in any angle pretty much, while also keeping the cable in a very defined spot at the top of this pulley to feed into the center of the winch. So I just gotta get one of those floating in midair, like right here in front of this winch. Alrighty, here's my design for this gantry. We got the four mounting points on the rear bumper of the truck, as well as that boom post and the wall that is attached to the winches. And we're just gonna have a ton of that tubing crisscrossing all over the place with all the angles to get all the strength. We will have to cut a little notch out of this face here, but for now I'm just leaving it circular so we can mount it in the lathe and machine that inside face, that inside edge. And other than that, the actual roller tube isn't modeled, but I don't really need it modeled to help with my design with that. So yeah, let's get the cutting tube and welding stuff together. All right, cutting this tube is gonna be my life for the next eternity.
head home. We'll Hello. See you later. <laughs> now it's favorite thing to do is yeah. bother me when I'm welding. I waited for you to, to finish before I said anything. Well, at least I'm showing my welds. I'm stacking quarters over here. Huh? Here's will appreciate that. Mm. Yeah. This ain't going nowhere. Well, I hope it's going on the head. It's going on the head. Okay. After that, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Down, Alan. Yeah, he got this. He designed this all on solid works too. But uh, since he wasn't using plate, he can't just use the machine and cut it. He got to do a lot of it by hand. So totally awesome. Thank you, Alan. Actually, totally wizard. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> All, right, All right, you have a good night. You too. All right. All righty, I got it repositioned so that I can weld these other grooves horizontally. I have it perfectly balanced. Just kidding, I have it tacked to the table on either edge. So that's going to hold it while I get in here and weld all these now. Boom, boom. Because horizontal is the best because the gravity will help dig your weld down into the metal and get really good penetration and fusion into it. So let's get after this set of welds and then we'll flip it to the other side. heavy already. It's gonna be strong. Alrighty, I got all my half inch plates cut out and cleaned up. Next step is to put them in the lathe and then I'll machine out the inner circle so it's the perfect diameter and perfectly circular. So it'll be the perfect size to fit the big metal pipe through. So right now these clamps are just designed to hold like a tube in there or a circular pattern on these lips but because i need to uh, machine the inside i need to flip them so that they're grabbing on the inside so i'll just need to undo these bolts here flip them around and then they'll clamp in on my piece easy as that Alrighty, let's see if I nailed this. <clears throat> Got this little scrap piece. That's nice. It doesn't jiggle at all. 
but still rotates freely. But no jiggle. I think it's gonna work good. Give it a lot of good support. Sweet. Alright, I got all these collars welded up. Now typically, when you weld stuff, you put a ton of heat into the metal so it expands. And then as it cools down, it'll contract to smaller than its original state. So that's what happened to me here. My tubes used to rotate nicely in here. And now everything is, has shrunk a tiny bit. So now everything's super tight and I have to like hammer the tube in. So I need it to rotate more freely. So, I tried sanding out those boards a little bit. It's not moving a lot of material. So we're just gonna take our tube, put it in the lathe, and take off a little bit of material. I've got this plate here to help center it. So this cone will sit in that hole and keep this end centered. And then the other half will mount to the chuck. And then I should keep it perfectly straight. So we can remove a nice consistent amount of material along the whole face of this thing and then it'll definitely fit I guess this pipe wasn't as perfectly round as I thought because it stayed perfectly straight in the lathe, but it stopped cutting for this section, which is fine. I mean, it's, it should be pretty close to pretty circular now. Now the auto feed kind of leaves all these lines in it. So now I'm gonna take a flap disc and teach you a fun trick on how to make this smooth. So we have this roller table. So put my tube in there and I'm just gonna run my flap disc on it. And this is actually going to keep it spinning. And if I want to slow down the spin, I just adjust my placement here so that I'm sanding more in this direction. And then if I want to speed it up, I just rotate back to here so that I'm driving it in that direction. So let's see how that works.
Alrighty. Fits nicely. Nice and snug, but still rotates freely. Should work great. So for this section of framework, I have to get these weird jogs in the square tube. So I did this first cut with the bandsaw since it has to cut through all this vertical material and it does that well. And then for the rest of the design, I cut out these little jigs. So I put that like that, trace my little line. And then I take this to the plasma table and I manually just run the laser through that pattern and I get the notches that I need. Okay, got this little chub tacked on there. And then this beam will go like that. Put it in that notch and butt up against like that. So I'll get this clamped down and start welding that out. All right, these pieces are tacked in. It's all perfectly on the same plane. So I'll weld it out fully now. So I'll weld it in. Got this side done too. And this thing is getting so heavy. <laughs> we still have maybe a third of the tubing left to do. So this is gonna be beefy. Alrighty, I've got this flipped over. Just got this weld and now I'm gonna get up in here. Okay, got the gantry bolted up loosely right now. Got the winch cables on the boom, helping position it in place. Now that it's on the back of the truck, got this little stub bolted in, and then this pipe here is gonna span between that and tie that all in. Same thing on the other side. Then from there, we'll have our tubes that run to there. And we gotta finish our rotating tubes with a snatch block pulley on the back end of that. Run the new cables through and then see if Dave will break it. Okay, I got this new piece tacked in. Time to weld it out.
We even got it wrong hopping onto the project. Because now we have a deadline and we have a recovery to go to tomorrow, so this thing has to be done. Thank you, amigo. Thank you. Yeah. Come on, man. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks for finishing this for me. <laughs> you're the best. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm the best. We made it back for our first recovery with it and it survived did good you guys see the nice black powder coat now i ended up welding this handle on it so we could steer this pulley now the top ones are they do have this sheath that if the cable pulls this way it brings the pulley with it but that only works if the cable goes in and does like a 90 degree angle on the pulley and since those always control just this tow bar mainly they are always at that angle. But you can imagine if we have this cable pulling straight back and we have a sheath coming out that if it's like pulls in this angle, there's no actual force to rotate the pulley that way. So I figured it'd be best to just put a, this manual handle on it. And it is working good. Also, we only have one side done because the second pulley is not shipped in yet. So once that ships in, I'll finish that side. So that's why we're just running one right now. So that's all we needed for this recovery of getting those cars out of the canyon. So if you haven't watched that video on Dave's channel, make sure to go check that out. And anyways, thanks for watching my video. Hope you guys enjoyed the process of building this thing. And we'll see how long it survives without Dave breaking it.